Sex is now being used by women almost exclusively as a weapon against men. This weaponized sex can literally have your net worth and deprive you of your children, your home, and your liberty. So let me ask those listening to take the subject at hand very seriously. Now on how many different levels is sex weaponized? Well children are of course the byproducts of sex and women have sex to control men. That's one facet of it. And then they use the children to control men as well, which is another facet. Women use sex to trick men into believing that they've fallen in love with them. She then marries the man and uses that marriage, and more importantly, the threat of divorce, to control men. Now, we all know and understand just how much women are using the power of sex to exploit men, and along with the merging of this behavior with the feminist concept of female empowerment, as well as the legal impunity and encouragement of this behavior, a recipe for disaster is ensured. But by far, the most dangerous form of weaponized sex is the kind that will put you behind bars for a very large portion of your natural life. This is the false rape accusation. Now, for my own personal desire to clarify, and residually so that the political correctedness police can have their PC orgasm, I want to definitively state that this channel does not advocate rape or sexual violence in any form against anybody, men, women, or children, anybody. Saying otherwise will result in your immediately being blocked from this channel. Continuing on. Now, let's try to understand why rape is such a serious crime these days, and more importantly, why specific types of rape carry 25 years to life prison sentences and why others don't. Let me explain to you what a rape of a woman is by a man. A rape of a woman by a man is a theft of what she owns, which is her ability to give sex, which is, of course, as I've said before in my other videos, tied to her reproductive abilities. The desire for men to have sex is only a desire because it's tied to reproductive ability, and both men and women understand this. When a man rapes a woman, the trauma, psychologically at least, lasts way longer than whatever physical injury, injury she may have suffered because of the rape. The psychological wounds may last her entire life, whereas the physical wounds may last a few weeks at the most. The woman feels violated because she was robbed of her ability to give and withhold sex from any man she so chooses at any time for any reason. So I think we can all agree that A, sex and more importantly, reproductive ability is the only thing that a man can't get from a woman without that woman giving him the express permission to do so. And B, when a man rapes a woman, the only lasting damage that occurs is psychological, not physical, at least in the vast majority of cases. So let's condense this down to its elemental form here. A rape is a theft of a woman's property, i.e. her sexual ability, which leaves her with psychological wounds that probably will last a lifetime. Now in the eyes of the law, this is the only rape between adults that matter. There are other types of rape that can happen, but nobody ever acknowledges this, but today we will. Now we have the real rape epidemic going on in the prison systems where men are raped daily and literally turned into sex slaves. But nobody cares because they aren't women and because they are prisoners. Now even though these men can possibly be innocent, and falsely accused of things like rape, for example, they're still expected to just deal with rape and sexual slavery, never mind the fact that even if they are guilty of these crimes, they shouldn't be allowed to be raped anyway. You see, when it's men, the assumption that they're guilty of a crime, at least to society, justifies their rape. However, prostitutes are guilty of a crime. In most places, prostitution is a crime. Does that mean they also should be raped? Of course not. You know, I, I remember the famous quote that a true test of a society and a civilization is how well it treats its prisoners. And in that case, especially for male prisoners, we are failing very, very badly. But we also have other forms of rape. The rape in the divorce courts and family courts. Now, we boil down rape in a woman to a theft of her reproductive abilities with major psychological scarring afterwards. Her reproductive ability is hers and hers only, and if she's forced against her will to give it to someone she doesn't want to give it to, well then that's the definition of rape. So, in the divorce courts, what does a woman do to a man? 
Is it not rape? Is it not a theft of a man's children, wealth, and property that leave him psychologically damaged for years, if not for life? Like I said before, just like the rape of a woman leaves lasting psychological damage, does a man not feel robbed when a woman he once trusted takes his children and forces him to pay child support with her being under no obligation to let him have contact with them? Men safeguard their legacy much the same way that women safeguard their reproductive ability and a man's legacy is his children. When a man works his entire life and sees his fortune robbed by alimony and child support for children he isn't allowed to see, is this not a theft that's bound to produce a lifetime of psychological suffering? Many men who choose not to pay for their own betrayal and embezzlement are thrown in jail and deprived of their freedom. So yes, men are forced to finance this atrocious behavior, this rape, under the threat of a loss of their freedom. You see, slavery is a form of prolonged rape, a rape that keeps on giving, or a rape via compulsory servitude, if you will. These rapes are never talked about because they don't harm women, but they do harm men. Look at the many instances of men committing suicide after they are raped via divorce. If it's not that big a deal, if a man should just get over it, if it's not a rape, then how come so many men choose to end their lives rather than live life after divorce? What happens to so many men after divorce that makes them feel so hopeless and violated that they end their own lives? Well, maybe it's the fact that they feel raped, isn't it? False rape accusations from women that unjustly imprison innocent men is another form of rape that nobody punishes simply because it doesn't harm women. The men chucked in jail and condemned to decades of unjust imprisonment certainly have been a victim of theft. They've been robbed of their freedom and the psychological damage of that is undeniable. But when DNA absolves these men of any wrongdoing, or when videos of the female accuser having 100% unadulterated consensual sex surfaces, these women don't get charged with rape themselves, they at best are relegated to legal wrist slaps and a few months of public embarrassment. And so what does all this boil down to? It boils down to sex being used as a weapon against men on a number of different levels. Now I want to once again make it clear that violence is unacceptable unless it's in self-defense. But I want to also make it clear that I didn't just compare rape to what happens in divorce and family courts. I just equated rape to what happens in these courts. I just equated rape to the false rape accusations. And the only end rape initiatives that should be taken seriously are the ones that include all types of rape. Now I'd also like to caution men. If you have sex with a woman you don't know very well, videotape it. Let people call you a weirdo. Let them say what they want. Videotape it. It sounds harsh, but let me put it in perspective that languishing in jail for a false rape accusation that may never be proven false if you don't have videos to back it up is much, much harsher, I assure you. So protect yourself. This is a war. And I'm not going to be a casualty of it. Good night. God bless.